All right, I've been getting a buttload of questions from people about the problem that these Mosin and Nagans have when uh, you go to chamber a cartridge and you have to generally give the bolt a pretty strong slap to get it to slide over the rim. I'm going to show you how to fix that today, or at least make it a little bit more bearable where you don't have to hit it quite as hard. If you haven't, check out the uh, Making Your Mosin Rock series that I put up of how to polish the chamber to get all the... Uh, Cosmoline buildup out of there and everything like that. Um, that'll help you a whole lot with the sticky bolt um, upon extraction. What this video covers, like I said, is uh, when you have to, you know, give the bolt a little bit of a slam going down to get it to, to slide over the uh, rim. Now, none of my rifles do that, so it's going to be difficult to show you before and after, but I'm just going to show you one of the things that you can do to improve that. And also, since we're going to be taking the uh, extractor off, I'll go ahead and show you how to check uh, headspace. Now, I don't have all three headspace gauges. I've just got the field gauge. If the bolt will not close on a field gauge, it's safe to fire. Now, you want to preferably, you know, have a rifle that will close on a go gauge, but not a no-go gauge. But if a rifle does happen to, um, if a rifle will close on a no-go gauge, but will not close on the field gauge, it's still safe to fire. Uh, you may just get a little bit more brass stretching and such. But for, um, the way things stand right now, we're just going to worry about the field gauge. And as I get the other gauges, we'll go through and check a few just to show you what to expect. But for now, field gauge. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, bolts apart. And let's just get down to the uh, bolt face itself. Okay, here's the uh, bolt face with the extractor removed. Um, you might run into some problems getting the extractor out. Because sometimes the steel is a little thin or brittle. And if you're careful, if you're not careful, you can bend it a little bit. Um, this one I actually ended up, when I removed this extractor, I actually ended up getting it, bending it just a little bit, but I actually think it's going to make the whole process of extracting a little bit easier anyway because, you know, it tended to have a little bit of springiness to it. So you can always bend the extractor out just a little bit to see if it'll have a little bit less tension when you go to chamber it, but we'll see in a second. Um, so you've got this extractor off, and just so you know, you can see that the bottom of this uh, bolt face is kind of dovetailed right there. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna gently tap the extractor from the top of the bolt. Okay, I didn't film that process, but you just give it a little bit of gentle persuasion, like I said, from the top, and it'll slide down out of that dovetail. I'll show you how I put it back together, but let's go ahead and uh, polish these parts. See if we can make them uh, a little smoother. All right, we're just polishing this extractor. Just make it a little smoother, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and polish the uh, groove that the extractor goes into, just uh, for future disassembly. That ought to make the uh, process a little easier to work with in terms of taking it apart and everything. This thing is polished pretty well, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and polish the channel we're going to get back together and we uh, probably won't have time to test fire it today, but I should be able to at least uh, assemble it and cycle some uh, bullets through it to make sure it's going to cycle well. So let's move on. All right, I had the other video that I made today showing, like, basically you can polish the extractor while you have it out to kind of ease a little bit of that uh, uh, rim tip that you get when you slam the bolt down. But while you've got the extractor out, it's good to go ahead and check the, uh, the headspace. And here I got a field gauge. What you want to do is you want to tilt the rifle straight up and just set the gauge on the bolt face. Now, mind you, you got to have the extractor out. And you're just going to gently close it. And you don't want to force it, but the bolt should not close on this gauge. All right, see right there? It will not move any further. That's actually really good because this is a field gauge. So you don't really want the bolt to close a lot. That's as far as it'll close. Now, if this bolt closed on a field gauge, it would be incredibly dangerous to shoot. Now, if a bolt closes on a no-go gauge, it's not necessarily unsafe to shoot. It's just you might get a lot of brass stretching. It's outside of what would be considered SAMI specifications. Um, myself, as, as, a, as a general rule in practice, I probably would not fire a rifle that didn't pass the no-go test just because, you know, that's just me. But generally, as a rule of thumb, if it'll pass the field gauge, you're good to go to shoot it. So, should be a good start. Mm -hmm. 
right, I'm going to load a stripper clip. Let's see if this uh, extractor thing that we did here, if it did any, any justice. All right. Seems pretty smooth. <laughs> you still have to give it a little bit of gumption, I suppose. It still has to overcome a little bit of force, but, I mean, it's, it's definitely, you know, smoother, so there you have it.